Well, hopefully, I'm not entirely sure. It should be live. I'm just going to play it and find out. Live in 10 minutes. That's not right, is it? Hang on a minute. I've done something wrong. Let's just refresh the page. Ah, okay. Gary's here. Hello, Gary. And Bryn and Neffers. Hello. Uh, so today, today we're going to be working on this binary clock. Let me just bring up my window so that I can see what you're seeing. Um, and also, is that Dundee? Dundee Road, Peter, 2P. Pieta, maybe. Uh, two Peters, it's really small writing. Right, so this thing was a bit of an issue before, if you recall. Lots of bodge wires, so we're going to try and fix it. Well, fix the PCB layout and the uh, schematic. So this is the schematic, really badly laid out, admittedly, but we're going to be trying to fix it. So I know some of the things I've done wrong, which was LED placement. So we're going to attack that first because it's kind of easy to fix. It's just moving things around. So I recall from the thing before, it was um, uh, the seconds and I think the single hours were wrong. Um, and that's because I decided originally to have them run one to eight down uh, rather than one to eight up. And we're going to keep one to eight up. I like it that way. So. Um, we're going to change it. So what we're going to do is the easiest thing to do here is look at the order that we've got them in. So we've got them in uh, 17, 18, 19 and 20 and that's the order they need to appear on the PCB. So uh, let's just, I can't remember the shortcut for, for reorganizing these things. So we're just going to try and find the wire. I should be able to use a rip up tool I think. That doesn't seem to work. I can't remember. Someone might try and remind me. Oh, where is it? Oh, didn't want to move that. I can't figure out how to do it. Never mind, we're gonna to have to do it with the base layer on because I can't really remember. So uh, we've got the LEDs here and now I've removed the labels from these, which is rather silly, I didn't need to, but I can look at the properties and see that that's 20 and it should run 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, I'm just gonna increase the size of the chat here because I can't really see it. So there we go, that's better. And there we go. Right, so uh, what was it? 17, 18, 19, 20. So this one's 20, so that has to come down. So we'll have to redo that. So let's just get rid of that wire. Not completely, we won't go all the way back down to the chip but we'll just take it a bit further down. Now that one needs to come down here. And then this bottom one's probably meant to be the top one. It is meant to be the top one. So let's also reroute that. And pop that one at the top. Just there. I will get to chat in a second, sorry, I just don't want to get started because otherwise I'll lose the flow of the whole thing. Now, this one goes up here. We've got a little bit of a trace here, what's that? What is that doing there? That's interesting. 
Why was it? Oh, it's still connected to the ground, I see. No big issue. All right, let's just uh, rat's nest tool this up. I'll jump over to chat for a second, hang on. And Gosh, you guys have been busy. Um, I am having a, a little drink. This looks like a lot of whiskey. It really isn't. It's um, watered down heavily. Well, there might be quite a lot in there. Uh, hello to China, if they're here having a look. Um, Kater Piggle says, where do you order your PCBs? I got my last lot from Osh Park but um, I'm gonna be looking at a different one for the bulk order, I think. Uh, already a thumbs down, David just started streaming. Thumbs down, bot. Yeah, it happened before the stream started, so obviously there's someone out there that doesn't like the binary clock, but that's fine. Um, what are you gonna do with the PCBs you purchased? Well, um, I promised to send one out, actually, um, and they're gonna make it with bodge wires included, but I think what I'll do is I'll just hold on to that PCB, wait till the new ones arrive and then send it out along with that. Uh, first job changed the version to 1.1. Yeah, you're right, I should do that. Let's, uh, let's do that now. Oh. Oh, look, at it makes it too big now. We're going to have to make it slightly smaller. Uh, let's change the size to 30. Maybe slightly smaller than that. 28. I don't like um, odd numbers, so there we go. That's all right. Barely able to see it. Right. Uh, anything else in the chat before I move on? Rip up ground. That removes all the ground traces. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> do I just type it in? Um, unless there's an option. No, I don't know how. What I should do is learn all of the... Uh... Where is my bottom trace? It... Ah, there we go, okay, done. Don't need to worry about that now. Now these two are in the wrong position as well. So this one, this one needs to move over. Why can't I pick that up? What? There we go. Don't know what's going on there. All right, I need to make sure it's lined up with the rest of them. Just the move tool, thank you. There we go. There we go, that's lined up. Oh, it is, you do type it in, okay. Okay, I'll do that next time. And what have I done with this 10K? I don't know why I've, um... oh, it goes to ground, so it doesn't matter, that's fine. Uh... This one up here. Try and get it in line with the rest of them. 
and then these two need to move as well. So let's take the signals out. And move those around. Uh, have you already decided if you will release PCB plus components as a kit? Maybe the original version one with bottle eyes included. Um, I, they're going to be released as PCBs with the components, not soldered on. So it's going to be a, a proper kit. Um, and I'll also release the files so anyone can make their own, uh, change it, do whatever really. Um, the idea was that people wouldn't necessarily solder it together like this. So they might have, they might choose to have the LEDs off the board and put it into a box or something. That's why I put two screw holes on there so that you could attach it to a case or something. I mean, they're not normal spacing. I don't even know if they're the right size holes for screws, but people will find a way, I'm sure. And that one goes down there. And that one comes up. Let's get rid of this ground. And which LED is this one? 18, 17, 18, 19. So this one needs to move up. There we go, and this one can come down here. Perfect. I'm just trying to line these up properly. There we go. Excellent. Right, I'm gonna delete my polygons actually, because I wanna do use the rat's nest tool just to sort out my signals. There we go. And we've got lots of wires going all over the place. Let's just get rid of them all. God, this might be <laughs> really annoying to change. Never mind. Okay, so they're all in the correct order now. Should be 17, LED 17. That's a wire I clicked on there. LED 18, LED 19, and it's definitely going to be 20, so 20. Okay, let's move on to the next lot. The next lot should be 22, 23, 24, just here. 24, okay, so that's already wrong. 23, 22. Okay, brilliant. So I made lots of mistakes, it seems. Okie doke. So you go up here, you come down here, and you're... Wait. <laughs> oh dear, I've already forgotten what I'm doing, hang on. So that needs to go to the top. Okay, that's cool, we can do that. That goes to the top, that goes to the bottom, and that one stays in the middle, doesn't it? 23. Yeah, okay, so that I didn't need to move that one at all. That's fine. Just being an idiot, I think. That overlapping resistor is on the other side. Uh, no, it's not. I just haven't um, moved it yet. I will get to it. All right, let's, let's move it already, shall we? Which way do I want it to go? There we go. It can go just there. Uh, 
Actually, was it up here? Some. Let's see where it is on the board. Actually, it exists just like that. That seems really rubbish. Oh, I see why. Because this resistor, this uh, resistor should be moved up. There we go. And then that sits just there like that, I think. That's roughly right. It's a little bit um, crammed in, but we'll make do. And then these ones sit alongside those. Okay, I see. I'm getting confused now. That's right, and there we go. And then this one has to come over. Like that. Perfect. He says perfect when it's clearly not perfect. These were aligned on a different grid, I think. Um, I probably could redefine them. Um, I think I'm happier just moving them. It feels like a quicker approach. Is that in a line? Yeah, roughly, isn't it? There we go. Right, so those are in the right place now. So it should be, what was it, 22? Yeah, 23, 24. Okay, now the next lot. Let's just check these properties four. So we're on to the next section here. <laughs> that is right. No, it's wrong. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Why is it all the wrong way around? Which ones were right? Are these ones right? LED eight, let's check. Yeah, okay, so most of it, I think I'd done most of the moving and I didn't, and I've changed my mind now. So, God, at this point, it might be easier just to go back and change it all. Um, <laughs> Brent says, can D1 turn around to match the others? What, little D1 over here? What's wrong with D1? <laughs> okay, it can move, we can do that. It's probably easier if it does, if I'm honest. Oh, why did that deselect? Right, it's now not connected anymore. There you go, you happy? <laughs> I will um, reconnect it. So let's rat nest that tool. and redo that. Um, well, we don't need to do that. Possibly. Oh God, eight? Yeah, eight. Mm. 
There must have been a reason I did that. Oh yeah, because I want to get the wires up there, that's fine. That seems awfully unclassy what I've done there, doesn't it? <laughs> I know you can't really see it because my face is probably in the way. Hang on, there we go. <laughs> I don't, not really entirely sure why I've done that. It's probably ground pathing is probably what I've done there um, to allow the ground sections to connect. Uh, Chris has asked, how's the 3D printer going? I'm looking at getting one soon, any recommendations? Um, it's going really well actually. Um, I only use it probably once every couple of weeks, if I'm honest. Uh, just when I see a model that I quite like or a, um, or a, a project requires some 3D printing. Oh, I've got to come over here, damn it, okay. Um, do I really want to block that off? We'll have to find out in a minute, but I might just come up with, uh, oh God, look at the size of that, uh, drill. What drill size is this one? 19, I think it's probably 18. God, what? I don't know why all the rest have diamond patterns, but we've got <laughs> we've got a big round one there. I don't know what I'm doing. Wrong one. Uh, diameter twelve. I can't remember. I'll look at the um, the PCB instructions. Do you know what? We won't. We'll just go with. We'll just go with that for now. Um, who was it that was telling me about a 3D printer? Um, Eric at makeme.org has um, some good advice on 3D printers. Which one was he using recently? Let's find out. He posted something on Instagram. Uh, let's see. God, what's his Instagram name? <laughs> there it is, let's see. The CR10 is a very good 3D printer. If, oh, Gary's already there. Yeah, if, I would recommend that. It looks amazing and it's really, really cheap. Massive build volume for the price. Um, my one is the Flashforge Finder not good value anymore. Um, it's now two years old, maybe maybe more than that now, um, but it isn't good value anymore. Uh, you can get much larger build volumes um, than you could back then for the price. So I bought mine because it was easy to use. It's very rigid, so there's no breaking parts really. Uh, and it, it has a very nice uh, touchscreen interface. So I bought it because it was easy um, for no real other reason um, did I get it. This is bothering me here, I just don't need that. They can all go to there, can't they? That's just silly. Oh, I don't know if I really wanted to do that. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, that looked really rubbish. So we'll try that again. We'll just come over here and drop it. Round about there. Oh, I think there was a, yeah, it was a ground path issue, wasn't it? We didn't want to do that, so. We'll do that and that and we can get rid of that. Ooh. Ooh. 
why on earth did I put, oh yeah, ground path issue. I keep forgetting. All right, where was I? I got confused now. Um, were we over here? Were these ones the wrong way around? LED five, I'm sure it was LED four. LED four, that's it. So we need to rip up all of these ones. Because even the middle ones, because there are four, they're not going to be symmetrical now. So this one goes there. Let's see if I can match it up with the rest of them. This long cursor that I've got is really, really useful for lining up components. There are some geometry commands you can use to place LEDs. Um, they're in the um, user something language, ULP thing, I think. Um, so you can do that if you want to. Uh, but when just placing a few, we're not, there's not a lot of LEDs here. We can just do it by hand. There we go. And the last one looks correct. Good. Right, let's just make sure they're in the right position. So we've got LED one, two, three, and then the last one's four. Let's check that's right. Where is it? One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So that's how I wanted it to appear. These don't look aligned. They're not. Neither is this one. Oh no, loads of them are out of alignment. There we go. It's just such a small grid that I'm working with, so it's easy to get a little bit out. And this one needs to come over one. Okay. So that's now aligned. These ones, are you in the right way? So it starts with five. <laughs> Here we go. It won't be, will it? Five, that's correct. Six and seven. Okay, that's correct. Whoops. Five, six, seven. And this one should be eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm pretty sure these last ones are in the right place. So we've got eight, nine, 10, and 11, and this one should be 13, okay. LED 13, good. Okay, so that's all of them rearranged, and now we just need to route them. Oh God, it's very annoying to do this. Okay, so start over here. Right, where, oh, I didn't move the resistors around. So this one comes up here. We've still got ground line attached, brilliant. And that one moves down the bottom and those two switch sides. Let's get rid of those wires. And now we have to line these up again. Try and line it up with the other ones. Why aren't you, there we go. That appears to be in the right place. And that looks correct. There we go, and the last one. That roughly looks right, doesn't it? 
there's such a small difference between my grids. So when I started, I had this really big grid on. Um, I don't know what was my view grid. There we go. So oh, it's currently set to mils. I prefer it on millimeters. Um, but yeah, it was set to point, where's inches? Point 0.125, which is your standard spacing for, for pins and stuff. But I didn't want that. I wanted to have a finer grid, so I've got more control over it. Just frustrating. Why is there a bigger, there is, there's a bigger gap here, look. God, that was probably in the original design. <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll just fix that. Ooh. Frustratingly, it's going to mean I have to just correct a couple of these. Oh, it's going to mean this one's out as well. It's not a problem though. Where is that going? Oh, we're just going to unroute that. We'll start getting on that one. I'll do that one again. Oh, what? See, they've updated this blooming thing and it's trying to help me out. Single layer mode, ignore walk around obstacles, turn it off. That's better. What? Why is it? <laughs> it's trying to help me out, but I don't like it helping me out and I can't seem to turn that off. Loop remove on. Single layer mode on. Oh. Stop helping me. There we go. That will do. Um, I don't... There. I think there is a grid overlay, actually. Um, it's in the... In here look but it just it muddies everything up so I like to get rid of it and just allow uh, for snapping so um, what are you doing there oh that was for an LED wasn't it let's just get rid of that and have we moved all of our resistors around yeah God, I hate my life. <laughs> I hate, I really hate organizing these things to be in line with each other. It's fine though, they're done. Right, let's, um, let's get these done. Right, these are pretty fine traces, but they're not carrying a lot of current, so it's okay. And you'll notice I'm sending it to what is a ground grid, essentially. And that all terminates here at the LED enable uh, pin. So that it means that um, you could just pull that pin out and the LEDs won't illuminate. So it won't be using any current through the LEDs. The chips will still be whirring away and doing their business, but um, you won't have any, uh, any illumination on those LEDs. So that saves a bit of power if you're just going to use it as a um, sort of a timer. So you can have like a, a one hertz uh, square wave essentially. Or, you know, I've also outputted two hertz here and 0.5 hertz. But we can get lots of other, other signals out as well. So let's put the rest of these in. Um, that resistor is the wrong way around. 
on my slightly incorrect grid. Never mind. God, I actually said this would only last an hour, but it's already been a bit longer than I'd expected. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to jump back to the chat. I don't really know what's going on over there. Um, so, you need a 3D printer. You? Um, oh, yeah, to print the printer. <laughs> Someone else wants a bit of whiskey. Oh, and now we're on 3D printers. Oh, Ludgate's joined in. I see. <laughs> hey Stephen, how are you doing? How are the uh, the twins? How are they? Right, let's get the rest of these ground wires in. And what else? Is oh, these need to be done as well. And I think that's it, actually. I think now we can root our things down here. What's, oh, it's, I'm just gonna pop my ground polygons back. Uh, do I remember how to do that? Yeah. Oh, misclick there. Fairly, ah, oh. let's just undo that. Just choose the blue and square tool. So ground polygons, if you don't know, are really, really useful for setting ground planes. And I like to do that because it just makes routing an awful lot easier. but you don't always want to use a ground plane on your circuits and you don't always need to. And also, if you're, I used to um, get my boards made at work and uh, I did that because they had a, it's a router, I guess. So it had, takes a copper PCB, copper clad PCB. That's probably not accurate. It's just copper on one side, then you've got that uh, fiberglass thing and then copper on the other side, and they'd root out a, a portion of it based on your circuit. And if you were to not use ground planes, that router's bit would get destroyed, and they didn't like it. So um, you, if you create a ground plane, so a, a sort of a, um, an area where ground is spread all over your circuit, and the only bits that are rooted out are the traces, it makes it a lot easier, a lot faster to do your board, and the technicians get less angry with you. So. That's why I do it, uh, but you don't need to. Um, when it's etched away in a factory, then they don't care whether you have a ground plane or not. So where are we going with our first? In fact, what we can do here is sort of look at the ones that are correct and working and have a look at where their LEDs are traced to. So let's look at the first LED. It comes down. Okay, we can do that. Right, and that was on the top actually, so let's do that. And I want that tool. Curious to know what that is. 
Oh, they were there from, okay, let's rip those up. I think they're to help with ground, but because I'm boxing these ones in, but we'll put them back if we need to. Right, let's find out. God, it's all the way down here. Look, we might have to go on the bottom of the board here, maybe. Um, yeah, we will. To about trying to get in the way of that ground. There we go, that'll do. Okay, so next up, let's do the closest one. I think we're going to go onto the bottom layer for this one, are we? Yeah. That's okay. I mean, I'm playing with fire a little bit here because when you do one, you sort of ruin the position <laughs> that you could use for every other one. So let's just find out which one these are. So. That's our top one. So we need to go around the outside here. How can I do that? We can go up through. Let's do that to here. And, oh Christ, alive. Right, I'm gonna have to reroute this bit because I need to come around the outside of that. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit more room here. Ooh, and I'm going to bring this down to there and get rid of that. And that, and we're gonna have to reroute that again. We can use the, um, the the top layer. That's not a problem, but it gives us a little bit more room to come in here. Oh Christ! And we're gonna do that. I'm saying Christ a lot. I can come up here actually. So let's do that with this one. There we go. Well, that actually was quite easy, wasn't it? Whoa. I've jumped across there, sorry. A bit disconcerting when that happens, isn't it? And then this one is on the top layer. And we need to go on the bottom to go around that one, I think. Okay, that's cool. Let's just get rid of that and a little bit longer. And, ooh, I'm going to have to go up again. Oh no, it's getting into that um, really annoying, oh, that's not going to touch, that's all right. <laughs> that's just horrendous. Okay, well, that's what we've had to do, so. 
they are now rooted, so that's okay. I mean, we haven't even got to the part where I've put loads of bodge wires on. So we'll find out what happens then. We might, it might take a lot longer than I expect to do this. Okay, up a little bit more. So that's one. Where do you want to go? Oh, Lord. No, it can't possibly go there. Why would that go over? Oh, it's going to detect. Uh, yeah, it's, it is going to the right place. So let's, it's going to the 4081, so it can do some logic. So it detects, oh God. Uh, so it can do some logic. So it's gonna detect which LEDs are on. So the way this works is, um, it's not, it's not clever in any way, so there's no processor. Um, but what it does is it figures out which ones of these LEDs are on, uses a bit of logic, and says, well, if those two are on, then we need to reset the next chip um, or the, that chip. So when it's on 59, for example, um, it will reset, where ordinarily it wouldn't do. So let's just go straight down here gone across again there we go to move down so what's on the top layer and what isn't dark colored are the top layer and the blue is bottom layer so Okay, if we just go Ooh. What did that mean? <laughs> An unexpected condition. Yikes. Um I'm cutting off a ground here. I don't think it's a problem because we're connected over here. Um, this looks like the most complicated version of the London Underground map. It'd do my head in. And the board one doesn't look half as messy as doesn't the app. Yeah, this does look crazy, doesn't it? There's just a lot going on. It's all these vias, really. I did try and make it easier to route, but the only way to do that would be to have a massive gap between these LEDs, not have them shoot upwards. You'd have to have this chip in between them. And then just... Visually, that didn't look good, but it's the ideal routing scenario is having the two LEDs on either side of the chip. But um, I chose to do it this way instead, so we'll have to persevere, unfortunately. So we've got up here, let's go straight down, shall we? Just bypass a lot of this stuff. We're going to have to go on the bottom side of the board now. Ah, that's on the bottom side, isn't it? No. Yeah, that is bottom side of the board. Okay, so let's just undo what we've just done there. And we can continue on the top side of the board, it seems. Because everything else is on the bottom side. There we go. Well, that... That one was ridiculously easy. Let's see this one. Okay, I can just go straight up. Um, there's probably enough room in there for two traces. So let's rip that up. And do that again. No, this process isn't conduct conducive to chat. Conductive is what I always said then. Yeah, I, did, I could have put them on the back, but um, I like seeing them. Um, I think it's, there's, it's something nice about being able to see the, the ICs. 
Plus the problem then becomes they have to be further spaced apart because you've got um, two LEDs on either side and I don't know, it just didn't, didn't read very well, that's all. And we're gonna go up again with this one. So usually when I root boards and do live streams, usually I'm asking for some help, but really here I'm just correcting <laughs> some mistakes, which is, um, which is a little different. So you see how this one's just gone. I mean, that one could have gone exactly the same. It's exactly the same circuit. So I might go back and alter that because this one is exactly like that. I think what's happened here is I've just realized what I've done because I was an idiot. Never mind. <laughs> this whiskey's going down a little bit too quickly. Right, let's go straight down here. And this one to there. Hopefully, I'm just going to run a quick um, DRC check. It says the design rules check. And Yeah, we've got some clearance problems here. Okay, so the design rules check tells you um, if you're gonna have some issues, as I'm there, with your PCB when you go to print it. So we might have to uh, just change this up a little bit. So we want to change the drill size down to I think 16 is the smallest for Osh Park. Let's try that again. It's much of a muchness, isn't it? Uh, properties, drill, diameter. I don't know what the diameter is. Is that the diameter of the pad? We might have to come back to that. Oh, Southpaw shorts. The auto root functionality. I think we did it in the first live stream that I, um, when I put this together and it was dire. It was really, really bad. Um, the problem with it is, is um, it tries to root everything in the shortest possible distance. And you can also set rules for um, whether you want the ground to go, or the bottom layer of the board to go horizontal and the top layer to go vertical, which is what I sort of tried to do. So the top layer, mostly goes vertical and the bottom layer mostly goes horizontal but it doesn't work very well unfortunately so uh, it, I tend to avoid it you know we're cheating here because I'm using the ground the uh, the bottom layer to go up. But, oh no, I can't do that, can I? I can go up a little bit. I can go up to here, but then I have to go on the top layer, that's okay. It's only a small cheat that way. Yeah, Eagle is, has a, a pretty bad auto-router. I mean, if you don't want to route the board, you can auto-route it and it's fine. Um, for things like this, this is just simple logic. It's gonna work all right, the auto-router, but if you had anything that was like sensitive to RF or you needed an appropriate ground plane, so 
maybe you've got um, a buck boost circuit or even just a normal boost circuit you're gonna you're gonna have problems with um, sharing ground planes or not having ground planes for example so lots of the times you need to sort of lay it out properly or not even lay it out properly just consider the components and eagle doesn't do that it just knows it's got these pins to connect and that's all right is that it i mean that looks right that looks like all of them yeah um electrical rules oops electrical rule check will tell me if there's anything unconnected no it's just a bunch of garbage there the design rules check we'll check it again we've got an air wire okay there we go so we can just connect that to there and then the clearance I think the problem is here, I don't want to be running that wire there, do I? We already know that it can go stir down the center, so let's get rid of that one too. And we'll go down the center. Just leave it there for a second and we'll undo this one so that we can run all the way down. Ooh. Ah. There we are. And then this one can come all the way down the center here as well. If you'll behave. Oh, it's really annoying when you have to zoom in and out of a schematic. It's not a fire, it's a test point. And then I need to, oh crumbs. What did I do on the other ones? Because it should be exactly the same. Oh, I see why that's different. Because we've got the diode central to that LED and now we don't over here. So we may have to move some stuff. That's okay, we'll just come cheekily around here. It seems a bit... I have to come over a little bit more. I'm gonna be overlapping that one, but that's fine. I'll come back and sort that. There we go. Uh, and now we've just got the one to connect, which we're gonna have to do on the bottom layer, which isn't a problem. Just come down here, throw in that, and then come back out. And then jump up to the top layer. It's a little bit messy, but it'll work. Right, so let's have another little DRC check. Air wire? What? How are you disconnected? That would be incredibly frustrating, wouldn't it? Unexpected, please report this. Undo. I, I don't know what that is. I'm just gonna click save, <laughs> just in case. Right, now let's have a look what we'd removed here, or rerouted, as it were. Oh God, this might take a while, and I've sort of run out of time now. But we'll jump to the schematic view. 
So that is pin 15. So the IC clock needs to be deleted from there and it needs to go to pin seven of the next chip along, which was the carry out. So let's do that. And it goes to H10. So, ah, oh, the carry in, did we ground that pin five? One, two, three, four, five is grounded. Yeah, so let's delete that and that. And this needs to go to ground, and this needs to go to name H10s. And we'll just stick a name flag on there so we can see what it is. H10s to there, yeah, great. Okay, so that's done. Oh, and also pin seven needs to be grounded. Ah, because I didn't ground my carryouts. I had on the breadboard grounded my carryouts, but I didn't do it on this schematic. So let's do that now. This might create all sorts of problems. With my board layout. Potentially, if the grounds aren't available for the board, it's going to be very frustrating. What is this? So this is my H10s line. Let's take it from a straight angle. Straight angle? That's not a thing, is it? There we go. So that's that chip corrected. We need to sort of do it with the rest of them. You mostly do synth stuff. I haven't had any proper training. Mate, I haven't had any proper training too. I just watched a bunch of um, uh, Dave from the EEV blog um, and he sort of taught me loads of things just by watching his stuff. But uh, none of it's critical. Like the auto router is there for a reason. Like it's it works, it'll work to uh, do your circuit, but it might not be pretty. It might not put um, traces where you want them to be. So I try quite a lot of the time to put my traces out in the open. So if I need to, I can cut them. Um, but that's just me because I don't really think about my circuits before I make them. I'm an idiot. Uh, right, next up, the second IC had some changes, didn't it? So it's carry out, it's pin one, two, three, four, five is grounded. No, that's the carry in, of course, because carry in blooming doesn't work, does it? Not when you're triggering from, um, what is a 4081, when you're triggering from logic, it doesn't work. Uh, pin, Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pin 15 is the clock pin, and that goes to diode two. Okay. So we're gonna have to create a little signal name here on diode two. Is it on the other side of the diode? No, it's on the, that edge. Okay, so we'll name that uh, reset. What? Hours. And we'll send reset hours. That goes to the clock pin, doesn't it? Pin 15, yeah. So we'll just change the name of that to reset H. Uh, rats nest it. And now we're gonna have to get rid of this blooming. This clock line that I craftily put along the bottom of the board here is not getting used, is it? <laughs> what an idiot. Right, at least it's not very far away.
Oh, look at that. Perfect. We can come down here. Well, that makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, Gary asks, have you ever thought of hot air soldering? I have actually. Um, I've just never bought a station because uh, I get by quite well with my soldering iron and I quite enjoy soldering. It's really relaxing, um, but it would be a lot neater if I didn't um, and I used some solder paste instead, but I've just never got around to buying one. I invested a bit in my current soldering iron, which is, it was only like 50 quid, but you know, 50 quid's a lot of money. So uh, I'm not prepared to spend any more at the moment on something that I don't particularly need or haven't found the need for yet. Um, I am buying a new scope though. I don't know if any of you heard, but I tweeted out about it. That I'm buying a new scope. My current scope is sat over there with a Tektronix 2205 and, a, and it's a Gould 400. So I've got an analog and a digital scope and uh, I plan on getting rid of the, well, both of them actually. I say getting rid, I'm gonna give them away uh, because I think someone else will make use of them and I won't. I like, the, the thing about my scope was I'm trying to investigate this and I wanted to see the, um, the Hertz value of the output. And I could see what it was based on the, the time division, the, uh, the thing I'd set, but I wanted an exact value and I didn't have anything capable of measuring um, Hertz that were that low. So uh, I want a scope to be able to do that. So I've sort of selected a few that I might get and I'm just trying to resign myself to the fact that I'm gonna to have to spend about 200 quid I think my budget is 250. People keep telling me to get this new Rigol one. It's not even new, it's been out for a while. Uh, it's like, uh, it's got a Z in it, I can't remember. It's a four channel scope. It's meant to be the best scope for beginners, but it's 379 pounds. And I think I use my scope once a month maybe. So it's not ideal. Um, anyway, where were we? Let's get back to this. So we've done the first chip and we're on the second chip and I need to take out pin 15. I've done that, reset H. And I also need to do pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven needs to go to, oh, that's already done. Of course, because that goes to the next chip. So the next chip along the minutes tens Let's change this. So minutes tens, pin seven is grounded. So we do not need that one. Get rid of that. And we will copy our ground across. Yeah, no more bodge wires, hopefully. I mean, I don't mind a bodge wire. It, it at least means you put work into the circuit, but um, I just sort of hoped it would <laughs> would have worked the first time. Uh, and then our clock signal comes from the carry out of the previous one. Oh, of course, because we're into, what? Does it really? Well, that, I suppose it works, but that doesn't seem right. If it works, it works. I'm gonna go with that, so. The minutes tens are carry pin seven. Yeah, pin seven goes to ground and then pin two, the IC clock, goes to pin seven of the previous chip. That makes sense. So we need to change the IC clock name to, is it really? That seems not, it doesn't seem right because I was getting rid of all of that. Does it really? Pin seven goes to the IC clock. It really does. Why didn't I check the breadboard before I did this? Okay. Just, just double checking here. <laughs> oh, uh, Maxin says um, his, his cheap DSO-112 has a frequency measurement. He's a frequency 
counter library. Yeah, I was gonna use an Arduino and just put it together, but I just didn't have it at hand. And it's never really convenient to have one of your Arduino boards just taken up for that reason. Do you remember there was a time I was gonna make my own frequency counter? In fact, that's why I made the one hertz timer, so that I, that was my time base, essentially. Um, what I should have done is done something that had a shorter time base and then multiply it so that we, I could read one hertz if I wanted to, but it was gonna be a one hertz time base and then I would read um, whatever frequency it was from there, but and white. I just think a scope's quite nice. Plus you can see um, how hard your square wave is if, the, if it looks good or um, if it changes over time as well. So if it's, um, if it's subject to temperature or if it's, um, if you hover near it, if any kind of, there's going to be kind of any capacitive coupling or anything like that. So I think a scope's a good idea. Nefer says, I wish I could afford a scope. Mate, I have saved <laughs> for a while to buy one. Um, I've been saving to buy a VR headset, you know, the HTC Vive. Turns out, I don't think I can afford the HTC Vive. I was gonna look at the, um, what's the other one called? Oculus, the Oculus Rift, which is 399 pounds, which is a lot of money. Um, so I was gonna look at buying that instead. But now, I'm sort of unhappy with the scope that I've got. I think I might have to put that off for a while and get this scope. The scope I'm looking at costs 220 pounds. So it's kind of a lot, um, but you can get USB scopes, which are like 60 quid, but I don't want, a, want it tied to a computer. So I'm gonna get one of these desktop ones. Uh, so yeah, I think I might go for the hand tech model or a Sigilant model. It might be the Sigilant one, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm getting distracted uh, and I wanna, finished by half past nine, I think. Even if I don't finish this, I think I'll have to finish the stream. So yeah, pin seven is grounded. We've done that. That's the third I see, yeah. Pin seven is grounded. And pin 15 goes to pin seven of the next chip and that is called M10s. Let's change that, M10s. And then the carry-in, I think, will be grounded, won't it? So that's pin five. It isn't grounded. Why isn't it grounded? The carry-in shouldn't go to M10s, does it? Or maybe I cut that trace. Damn it, I don't know. Which trace did I cut? I wish I'd documented this properly. It would have been good, wouldn't it? Uh, Gary says, get one to someone to send you one for a review. Yeah, I don't really do that. Um, People contact me and ask me if I want to do something. And if, if I think you guys will like it, I'll say yes. If not, it's such a time sink to do a review. Honestly, you put loads and loads of time into it. I did, um, what was it, like the, oh God, I can't even remember. I want to say orange pie, but it's not orange pie, is it? It's like another fruit. Raspberry pie, orange pie, and Apple? <laughs> I can't remember. It's some, is it? Does it even say? The banana pie, that's it. Um, I got sent that and God, it's a learning process to get that thing going. So it's a lot of, um, a lot of work. And because I don't know much about oscilloscopes, I only know how to use one, roughly. I don't know how to test it for its reliability or anything like that. I wouldn't want to um, accept one. I just wouldn't do it. The same with 3D printers. I've been offered loads of 3D printers. Um, people want to send them all the time to like, have a review and stuff like that. But I don't know anything really about 3D printers. I'm no expert, so there's no point in me taking one because it would just be a rubbish video. Um, and they'd be disappointed and I would too. And you guys would see right through it. I mean, it'd be ridiculous. 
so I don't do that. Oh, you're all coming in with banana pie now, I see. You probably all were shouting at the screen when I was, um, <laughs> I was pontificating over it, I guess. Uh, anyway, I'm confused why I haven't grounded the carry in. Pin five, one, two, three, four, five. Not grounded at all. Is it cut though? Let's, I'm gonna to have to jump over to the board um, and I just wanna see the bottom layer because it was on the bottom that I cut that and which way round does this go? God, it's confusing because it's flipped isn't it? So over there is that. So if I come over here, they're all really grouped around this IC, that's right. And then over to, I know you can't see this, I can. One, two, three. One, two, three and I cut this trace. No, I didn't. Oh God, this is really hard. Oh, sugars. That trace there, I think. Oh God, this is annoying. It might, might mean there's um, a, <laughs> it might mean there actually has to be a bodge wire in the final version if I don't figure this out. No, I'll have to get a multimeter on that. We'll do everything else that we can do for now. And then I'll multimeter out the traces and find out what I've cut and what I haven't. Um, so we'll leave its carry in for now connected to M10s. Pretty sure that's wrong, um, but I don't want to risk it for now. And then it's, uh, it's IPC clock is connected to that and it's carry out is connected to ground, that's fine. Next chip along has got three changed connections. So we're changing its IC clock and its carry out is grounded. Pin seven goes to, no it isn't but it's carry in is grounded. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And it's IC clock goes over here. So we'll have to create a new one. So uh, this is reset minutes. And then we'll just put the name down and change this one. If I can type. Okay, let's see what we've effed up there. Uh, air wires are bound here. Preset standard. Okay. Let's just do that. And then we've got a couple of things to root here. Ooh, this is awkward. So, ah, uh, okay, let's get rid of these IC clockwise because they don't need to be there. That I skillfully put through these uh, resistors here. How frustrating is that? Maybe we can come down the bottom of the board now, actually. So we can come down through that resist. No, nope. doesn't like that. That's fine. We'll just come across here.
That's just ugly as sin, isn't it? We're not doing that. We're undoing that. We'll come down and we'll jump onto the other layer and then we'll sneak up through here, I think. That's better. And we'll come all the way across here. Boom, done. That's better. That looks a lot nicer. <laughs> I mean, I've just added two more vias into what is a basically a Swiss cheese board at the moment. There's loads of them all over the place. All right, what else have we got that's... Uh, is that it? I thought we'd uh, created a few more. Let's just do a design rules check. So we've got one air wire here. Let's have a look. And it goes to reset. Okay, well that is like super easy to change, isn't it? Oh. Let's ignore what that means. Save. Done. Right. Now the last I see that has changes on, I think there's only one more. Wrong way around, David. Oh no, that is it. That is everything. So those are all the changes that we need to make. There are a couple of traces that I've cut on the back of the board um, and I'm going to have to sort of probe those out and I'll do that in my own time. Um, but we're going to end this stream here, I think, because it's been an hour and 20 minutes. Oh me, that's a whiskey. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Sorry, I just like doing that. Um, anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I will um, play around with it some more. It'll get published. Um, when I get the PCBs back. Um, if you guys have got any suggestions on um, where I should get them printed, I'm gonna, I want to print 20. So if you see any offers or anything, um, just tweet me or put a comment on this video. That'd be great. Um, it'd be really helpful, actually. I've looked up loads of places. Some companies have got in touch with me and said they'll give me a, like a special offer or whatever. I'm not interested in that. I'd like to do it sort of legit would be good. Um, OSH Park have um, printed the one I've currently got and it's really great. It's a really good quality PCB, so I may just go back to them. We'll see. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you all very soon. <laughs>